Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. In this episode we'll be taking a look at 99 cents only stores. And the reason for that is on April 4th they announced they will be closing all of their stores and liquidating the company. The liquidation started the next day and it even includes the buildings if they own them. If you're not familiar with the 99 cents only stores, they're a discount retailer similar to places like Family Dollar and Dollar General, although they are a much smaller company with only 371 locations. They have locations in California, Arizona, Nevada, and Texas, but about half of those 371 locations are in California. The reasons that the company has given for why they're shutting down are things like the economy, the changing landscape of retail, the pandemic, shoplifting, but I think truthfully the real reason why they're closing is because this company is another casualty of a leveraged buyout. Back in 2011, they were purchased via a leveraged buyout for $1.6 billion. And if you don't know what a leveraged buyout is, that basically means that the money that they were purchased for, that $1.6 billion, was new debt that was tacked on to any debt the company already had. Almost exactly five years ago, I did a video covering 99 cents only stores because a lot of that debt from the leveraged buyout was going to start coming up to be due at the time. And I felt like with so few stores being saddled with so much debt, it didn't seem like there was going to be any way for them to dig themselves out especially when they were already starting to struggle with profits at the time as well. As a matter of fact, the last year that the 99 cents only stores were profitable was in 2015. While the issues that they mentioned as being the reason why they're shutting things down are valid issues in the retail landscape, a healthy company would be able to adapt to those issues over the last few years. I think really what killed them is being encumbered by a mega sized amount of debt, causing them not to be able to adapt and expand. I mentioned earlier that these stores are similar to places like Dollar General and Family Dollar. However, what's different about 99 cent only stores is they have a heavier focus on groceries. I don't think I've ever seen fresh produce at a Family Dollar or Dollar General before. Now there isn't much left on the shelves here, but what is here is stuff that you definitely wouldn't find at any other discount store like fresh asparagus for example. What I find interesting about store liquidation sales is that you can start to see the years of built up grime and stuff that's usually hidden from your eye when the store is operating normally. I know that looks pretty bad, but even at fancy grocery stores when you just peel back a few layers, they look like shit too. I have been in some areas where all of the grocery stores have closed up and the only place nearby to get things like fresh produce and groceries are the 99 cents only store. So the loss of these stores is going to be pretty awful for some neighborhoods. Most of those neighborhoods also probably have a family dollar or dollar general, but like I mentioned earlier, neither of those stores carry the amount of groceries that the 99 cents only store does. Besides the halfway decent grocery selection, they do carry all the other stuff that you expect a discount store to carry, like cheap household goods and greeting cards. And they actually own a wholesale business called Bargain Wholesalers that distributes a lot of this stuff to other discount stores. From what I understand, Ayers Management and the CPP Investment Board, who are the current owners of the company that screwed this place all up, plan to try and keep and still operate the wholesale side of the business. So some neighborhoods are going to lose their only grocery store, but hey, at least the owners of the company will still be able to distribute knockoff GI Joes to other discount retailers. Or if not knockoff, some of the smallest GI Joes you've ever seen. I always do like looking through the toy selection at discount stores because a lot of it is closeout stuff so sometimes you'll find some real gems but I didn't see anything like that here. What I did see here though is an emergency exit with boxes cluttered in front of it. Why do all discount store chains feel the need to do this? There's plenty of room for these boxes of wrapping paper over by the greeting cards. You can see there, plenty of room. Why do you have to clutter stuff up near the emergency exit? Although that isn't nearly as heinous as an example of it as what I've seen at Family Dollar and Dollar General. Something that kind of surprised me here was how unbusy this liquidation sale was. This was filmed on a Sunday afternoon, a week after the liquidation sale started, and I really expected it to be busier and to look a little bit more picked over than this. But I did notice they aren't discounting things as heavily yet. And from the carts all over, it looks like they still have plenty of stuff to put on the shelves. 
The more time I spend in these particular stores, the more I get a sense of a 80s grocery store aesthetic to them, and I actually quite enjoy that, so it does bum me out quite a bit that these stores will all be closing. There is another location not too far from this one, so let's go check that one out. This location sits right in between a Goodwill and a Savers thrift store, which are the locations that I feature quite frequently in my thrifting time videos. So far I've been talking about what's currently going on with the 99 cents only stores, but it is probably worth going over a little bit of their history. The founder of the company, Dave Gold, opened the first 99 cents only store in Los Angeles, California in 1982. But his idea for this type of store goes all the way back to the 1960s. In the 1960s, he owned a liquor store in Los Angeles, California, and he started experimenting with selling bottles of wine at 99 cents. He noticed that as he priced things at 99 cents in his liquor store, they would sell and people were really happy to buy things at that price. So he thought, why not just open a store that sells everything for 99 cents? I noticed this drinking game, which had a The 99 Store branding on it, and it turns out that's another name that this chain of store uses, and I'm wondering if they started using that name in the early 2000s when they abandoned the everything is 99 cents in the store model. The fresh produce section of this store seemed a little bit smaller than at the previous store. They do have fresh kiwis here though. It's kind of interesting to see that that's something that's not moving quite as quickly as everything else here. Do you see what I mean about it feeling kind of like an 80s grocery store in here though? Those frozen and deli signs using that font with those colors just feels very 1980s to me. Seeing thrifty ice cream makes it feel like the 1980s too. I used to see this all over the place and I don't really see it anywhere anymore. Here's a closer look at some of the stuff in the cooler section. You can see they have regular milk, oat milk, soy milk. They've got yogurt. They've got actual juice. It's not all just the kind of crappy junk food that you would find at Dollar General and Family Dollar a lot of times. Some of that there is actually cheese, although they do have got the pasteurized cheese product as well. They're currently only doing a 5% discount on food right now, but a lot of this stuff has a shelf life. So I imagine once the discount gets down far enough, all of this will just get wiped out in a couple of hours. This store was surprisingly unbusy as well for a store that's in the process of liquidating. The company did mention that they plan on wrapping up the liquidation process by June. So I imagine in a few more weeks these shelves will be a lot more barren. As I was walking down this aisle, I noticed that there were a ton of helium balloons stuck up on the top of the ceiling. I know if I had worked here in my younger days, me and the other employees would have figured out how to make some blow dart guns to get those balloons to come down. Even though all 371 locations are closing, there may be a glimmer of hope for the 99 cents only stores. A few days after they filed for bankruptcy, a man named Mark J. Miller, who is the CEO of Pick and Save Bargains and a former president of Big Lots, announced that he had a group of investors together that were ready to try and acquire the California locations, which would be about half of those 371 stores. If they're successful, they plan to reopen the California locations about 90 days after the liquidation sale ends. They say that'll give them enough time to restock and do some cleanup and renovations. If they are successful, I hope they're also able to hire back some of the 14,000 people that are losing their jobs due to the 99 cents only stores closing. If you haven't been able to tell throughout the video that I'm a little bit salty about all of these stores closing, I am, and it's because of the leveraged buyout situation. I don't think that they should be allowed anymore. This is the same kind of thing that killed Toys R Us as well. They get purchased through these leveraged buyouts, they're saddled with a ton of debt, and then one or two missteps dooms the company, whereas a financially healthy company would be able to recover. These kind of buyouts don't do anybody any good except for the handful of executives at these investment firms who make a bunch of money from them, run the company into the ground, and then just discard them and move on to the next one like vultures. Obviously, the 99 cents only stores aren't the nicest stores in the world, but I think they're much, much better than their competitors like Dollar General, Family Dollar, and Dollar Tree. And things aren't exactly going great for those stores either. Family Dollar just recently announced that they plan on closing thousands of stores over the next few years. 
That's a story for another video though. Hopefully that new investor group is successful in keeping the California stores alive because at least that means some neighborhoods won't lose the only place nearby to purchase real food. Food deserts are a problem and I think it's a problem that's only going to get worse as grocery stores all try and merge together. But what are your thoughts on the 99 cents only stores? Is it a store chain that you shop at and is it a place that you're sad to see go? Let me know down in the comments below. As always everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my video on the liquidation of the 99 cents only stores. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.